All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Freedom from Fear, Just Tap It with Joan Kaler and my special guest, Jules Vandermott. Did I say that correctly? Am I almost there? Beautiful, Joan. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> who is an EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques practitioner, trained as a social worker. Today, we're going to talk about getting Emotional Freedom Techniques, tapping an EFT into the classroom. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, I think Jules and I share a passion for this, although I'm not as active in my local school district as I would like to be, but the how important it is to teach children how to tap so mm. that they can learn how to regulate their emotions yeah, and what to do when they feel sad or afraid or angry or scared, whatever it is, all those negative emotions that we adults have words for sometimes, but children can't always find the words. Yeah. So this is such a tool. But Jules, what is your experience on helping children and bringing EFT into the classroom? What? Um, well, so my background as a social worker is many years of experience working in child and adolescent mental health um, and working in schools in um, sort of early intervention programs with children who are sort of on the verge of, um, you know, difficult behaviours. Um, so that was many years ago. So, but obviously since I've learned tapping, um, I've really enjoyed working with children and families using EFT. Uh, and I haven't really been into the classroom with this as yet, but I'm just seeing more children, mm -hmm. um, children, parents, families, yeah. So Peter has a Peter Stapleton though has developed a wonderful program called Tapping in the Classroom. Yes. So that's sort of what we recommend for teachers to learn about EFT tapping to manage their own stress, number one, but also to what they learn in that in that online course is basically how to use EFT in a classroom setting. So not doing one on one therapeutic work with children, mm -hmm. but how to actually use it, apply, apply it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a really good program. I'm not going to bother trying to reinvent that wheel. Um, but yeah, I certainly love working with kids and families in my private practice. Yeah. And what have you find with, what's the youngest child that you've worked with? What do you find helpful about teaching um, EFT to yeah. children? Oh, look, I, I mean, I've worked with five year olds and I certainly know plenty of people that do it with their three and four year olds. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not really, um, age isn't a, a barrier at all. What I find is great is that children are very receptive. You know, they don't have, they're, new, they're usually not overly cynical. Like they sort of just will have a go and, um, <laughs> you know, they're curious and they feel the shift very quickly usually. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I find working with children is, Working with children themselves is easy and delightful because quite often they'll just copy you and say the words and kind of feel better pretty quick. Um, and then, you know, often they will do it for themselves and they'll go to school and tell their friends, you know, I learned this tapping thing. And if a friend is sad, they'll say, here, I'll show you how to tap. Um, you know, so they're not sort of shy. They don't worry about what people think so much. But, of course, you know, we teach them ways to tap in, in discreet ways so that if they are worried about what people think. But I just, yeah, I find that children are mostly pretty pretty open to learning new things and they want to learn how to feel better. Mm, they don't have layers and layers and decades and decades of crap like no. many, many of us adults do. Well, isn't it uh, wonderful that now we have tools that we can help children process exactly. their emotions so yeah. they don't have to put them on a shelf or their subconscious buries them deep with inside. And then however many years later, something yeah. triggers it. And then people can't understand, why do I feel depressed? Why do I feel anxious? Because they never processed whatever happened when yeah. they were younger and it's coming out now. Yeah. I'm going to go for one second here because I think this is so important. 
I want to go and show people So everybody who's listening, just bear with me for a moment. I thank you. Because I am pulling up. Here we go. All right, EFT training. I want to bring up tapping in the classroom. Oh. Did you find it? Almost. Let's see. I'm on her site right now. Are you on the evidence-based EFT site? Let's see. I think oh, it's... Um, evidence-based EFT. Is that a dot .com, Jules? Yeah, yeah. Because when I go to evidence-based EFT... Oh, well. I can send you the link. Well, I kind okay. of want to show everybody. Right. At the moment. Come on, I know you're in there. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience on this. We have to tapping. Thank you, sir. Okay. There's just a whole bunch of information on, I mean, Dr. Stapleton has just, <laughs> she's a force of nature. I'm just going to go ahead and share for a moment here her book too. I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go. Let's share that. So this is Dr. Stapleton's website, and on it she has the science of tapping which is a really cool book she's just been i mean it's everywhere right now and it's the most wonderful i want to say compilation of stories research it's not a dry book at all it's fascinating it's just really interesting for any let's see if i can turn this up a little bit that could help you feel better if You've got some sad feelings or some worried feelings. How does that sound? I see you've found my bear. Do you like him? He's pretty cool. Have you noticed that he's got these special spots on him? So if you turn him around and have a look, he's got these special spots. There's one on the top of his head as well. And if you look at this little one, he's got some too. Under his arm. There might be one under that arm. So there's actually eight. I wonder if we could count them. We'll start at the top. Maybe there's another one hiding somewhere. Might be just eight under there. You found it. Excellent. So what we know is that these special points are also on us on the exact same spots. And if we tap on them with two fingers like this, you can see, and there's one there, who don't think there's one over there, it makes us feel calmer. So the bear's great, isn't it? Because we can actually tap on those spots to help the bear. And then what we can do is we can tap them on us. So let's have a look if you can find those same spots. Where would that one be on you? Top of the head. And what about these ones around these eyes? Where would they be? Maybe one here. Yeah. On your eyebrow. Side of your eye. Under your eye. And what about is there one under his nose? There it is. Where's that tricky one? On his chin. That one. Just here. 
who is this one <laughs> under his arm? And then we can always come back to the top of his head, can't we? And do another one. So sometimes when we're not feeling real good, we might be able to do some tapping on those points. So I'll show you how it goes. Do you want to put that there down next to you? And if you like, you can have a look at that little one. Now, what would be a feeling that you might want to do some tapping on? Nervous. Nervous. That's fantastic. When do you feel nervous? Um, before we go on stage and do something. Mm, before you go on stage. Wow. Do you go on stage and do different things? What do you do? Speech and drama. Speech and drama. So what happens when you feel a little bit nervous? You do weird things in your body. Does your belly go funny? Like butterflies? Mm -hmm. Do your hands get a little bit sweaty? Do you feel a little bit funny in here? Maybe. That's all nervous, isn't it? So maybe what you could do next time is what I'm going to show you now, what our bear just showed us. So if you get two fingers and we tap on this to start with and we say nervous, I feel nervous, and side of the eye, nervous, nervous. What about under the eye, nervous? Could you say them too? Under your nose, nervous. Yes. And on the chin, nervous. This one we call our collarbone, nervous. So if you go under the arm, nervous. And top of the head, nervous. Now sometimes to work out how nervous are we, we can use our hands. So we can say, I'm this nervous. Or we can say, I'm nervous. So how much nervous do you think you get when you go on stage? Ooh, that big. And if you came down and you're only this nervous, that would be a lot less, wouldn't it? So tapping like this might help with our nervous. I want to show you today too a shortcut. So a quick way to make nervous go away, only with four points. So we had eight points, didn't we, on our TV? But there's four we could just do. So we're going to use both hands now. So do you want to put Bear back up here so that he can just have a rest? We're going to use both hands. So we'll say the words nervous too, but we'll do both our eyebrows. Nervous. Under our eye. Nervous. Now we're going to make a fist like Tarzan and go nervous. And this time we're going to hug ourselves. So we open our hands up and go nervous. Under our mind. Underneath. That's it. So let's try it again. Nervous. Under our eyes. Nervous. Tarzan, nervous. And under our arms, nervous. Hug yourselves. How does that feel? Feels good now. Do you think this is something that you would be able to use? When do you think, apart from nervous with speech and drama, do you think you'd use it any other time? Maybe, some different times. Maybe teach your friends as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much today, Elise, for being my helper and for helping us demonstrate what to do with those bears. And now the thing is him. That's cool. Thanks, Elise. Is the beauty of EFT and working with children. So that is the perfect way to help teach children how they can manage their emotions through tapping and they don't have to be nervous or scared or frightened anymore. It's just, it's wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Jules. Okay, let's see here. So we'll take a look at that too. Because what's really exciting is to be able do, 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 to be able to help children all around the world in the classroom everywhere. And Jules has been kind enough to send me the link for tapping in the classroom. Yay! All right, folks, Jules is on fire here. So I'm going <laughs> to take you there so you can also see that. And then we are definitely coming back here. All right. So this is the website for 
evidence-based. I don't know why in the world that didn't come up for me, but there it is right there, evidence-based.eft.com. And tapping in the classroom is an online training that you can access. There's that dear little girl or another little girl. So it's a wonderful, wonderful program for helping children manage their emotions starting boy wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just start this in preschool yeah wouldn't yeah definitely amazing Jules, to get this yeah. into all classrooms in preschool and just take it on up there there would be so much less drama in school so much less trauma yeah. in mm. school and i think you know what i'd really like to see joan is you know like in slovenia they um they very forward thinking and they provided EFT training to all their teachers at oh. 70 percent you know they reduced the cost significantly um so that it was very very affordable and accessible for all their teachers but i think what i would like to see really is that when parents are having their antenatal classes you know that yes yes for EFT to deal with the pregnancy, the birth, the postnatal period, the breastfeeding, the stress of the being new parents, Agreed. and then and then leading into being able to learn to tap with well, firstly themselves. I mean, what I do in working with children, working with children's lovely, but to me, you really need to work with the parents. You know, so I always have a session with the parents first, so that they really understand what EFT is. They have a personal experience of it. Because otherwise, if they don't have that experience of it themselves, they sometimes don't kind of believe how quickly the emotion can shift in a child. Um, so it's very important that they have a thorough understanding and experience of EFT themselves. And they know, they know a bit about the science behind it and how it works and that it's just calming the amygdala. Um, but then also, you know, what I often find is that, you know, a parent wants you to see a child and I'd say, well, you, you'll be coming first. <laughs> <laughs> and what I really encourage is a whole family approach. So it's not just the child has the problem, the child's the one that needs to tap, <laughs> but mum and dad often have the problems as well. And that's right. the reason the child is reacting the way they are. So yes, it's important to get it out into schools, but even more important to get it into families, you know? And I sort of encourage children to say, notice when mum or dad might need some tapping as well. You know, and kids love that. It's just sort of for everybody to share the responsibility. Mm -hmm. if I've got to manage my emotions. You do too. You know, you're looking a pretty angry and frustrated, mum. Yes. Tap, tap, tap. Uh -huh. And it can just be a circuit breaker. Do you know what I mean? Yep, for yep. Um, not in a smart sort of a way, but a funny way. Um, it's not all about children having to control their emotions but it's about expressing emotion. It's about managing emotion. We all get angry and frustrated and annoyed. And cranky and you know that parents really need to be role models and adopt EFT as at least one parent you know not not always both parents are going to be into it but there needs to be one parent on board with it not just sort of saying to the kid go to the room and tap yeah right but let's I can help you let's sit down and do some tapping together um, yeah so I think that's really important that we don't just see it as Children need to get better at this because I think uh, children would be better at it if adults were better at it. Yeah, amen. So for all the parents <laughs> that are listening out there, please learn tapping for yourselves so that you and your children can tap together. Yeah. And then and so many parents. Go ahead. Oh, well, so many parents will say that when they actually learn EFT for themselves and they reduce a lot of their own anger and frustration and stress, I mean, it's basically a stress reduction technique that they feel closer to their children, that they feel more connected with their children, that their children are more likely to approach them if they don't look tired and cranky all the time. Um, so, you know, lots and lots of parents will say to me that they're grateful for learning EFT and firstly for dealing with a lot of their own stuff, whether that's in a session with a practitioner or, you know, really often that's needed, but more as a way of helping them to feel more calm and present when they're at home with their kids. And um, you bring up an excellent point because it's the old put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah. You can better assist your child. You That's need right. to learn these techniques, these tools first so that you can practice them for yourself. And then, yeah. yes, then 
will both, I'll teach your child and then you can both tap together, yeah, yeah, which yeah. will definitely break the cycle of frustration. Yeah. But you need to learn this as well. Actually, I just I've got a little tiny story to share. Is that okay, Please, Joan? Yes. Go. I was uh, approached by a very intelligent mum um, who I worked with last year. So I saw the mum by herself and she really got on board with the tapping herself and she brought she sort of dragged the son in he didn't want to come and dad came along to help him come and we all tapped together and but the son didn't really want to come back but they were having a lot of trouble with his behavior anyway i didn't really hear from them again i don't think um and she approached me at a function the other day and said that she the, the, the boy didn't get into the tapping, but the parents really did. And so they were able to identify that what was wrong in their household was that there was too many screens and that this kid was addicted to sort of games and mm. phones and, you know, tablets and whatever. And um, so basically the parents, through their own tapping, got some clarity and basically got all the screens out of the house. Wow. And when I saw her, it was eight. She that they'd been doing eight weeks of no screens at home, and she said, "I've got this delightful child. There's nothing wrong with him." So she said, oh. "Thank you, thank you for the tapping that you know that basically they took on board the responsibility." Like she was saying, he's got a oppositional defiance disorder. He's, you know, he's a nightmare, and um, and then that's what they came up with themselves. And she said the empowerment that they feel, obviously there was a, you know, the kids weren't happy about it, but she said after a while they got used to it and they realised the parents were serious and the screens aren't coming back. And she said the behaviour just mm. settled down. And she said, we never would have felt strong enough and clear enough about why we were doing that mm -hmm. without the tapping. So, you know, yeah. You bring up story. such an excellent point because pets, Parents will call me and say, my child needs help, but I'm going to explain to them, yes, I want to help your child, but I need to talk to you first. Yeah, yeah. I need to teach you some things first so you can better assist your child. So we are going to meet first. Yeah. So and often what happens is the child might have one or two sessions. Maybe, you know, children actually don't need a lot of, well, not, this right. is a generalization. Some, some kids that have really bad anxiety or whatever might need more sessions, but quite often it really does become apparent to myself and the parent. The parent is the one that needs the support. The parent's the one that's struggling. The parent often has anxiety themselves or very high levels of stress um, that they're coping with because maybe they're a single parent or they've had a death of a parent or, you know, it's just stuff going on in their life with work and money and pressure. And when the parent, um, and I'm not saying mothers are more important than fathers, but mothers do tend to be the ones that bring the kids. When the mother feels calm and okay, the kids kind of just sort themselves out. So mm -hmm. I'm a really big um, one to push that it's a whole family approach and the parents must be on board. And if you can get the parents feeling better, the kids often will, even if they don't want to come to sessions, which doesn't happen very often, but you don't always need to work with the identified client. If you do a good job with the parent, that will make a big difference right. for a kid. Agreed. So all the parents that are listening out there, yes, we want to help your child, but we want to help you first mm. and teach you these techniques for your and own. And then you can help your own child. Right. Ah, let's do this. Jules, before we go into part three of our time yeah. today, how can people reach you if they want to work with you? Um, the best way would be my website, Joan. So it's www.tappingwithjules.com. Great, great. So I want to thank everybody who's listening and watching to Freedom From Fear. Just tap it. Please pass this on to those that you care about. I think this information is invaluable. And we are going to say goodbye for now. But next, we're going to be talking about... All right. Yes. Oh, energy is everything. So... That is our next topic of conversation. Stay tuned for part three. And for right now, see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.